Hey, it's Brandon at Psycasserol, and you're looking at my mushroom head. This is what happens when my hair gets really overgrown. So let's jump into it. You want to offend an INFP today? Okay, talk about my hair. You want to offend an INFP, the first thing you're going to have to do is tell them that they don't understand their emotions. Because of all the types, I guarantee you INFPs are most likely to understand their own emotions. Hands down. Another way to offend an INFP be a racist a-hole. Any kind of injustice, whether it's abuse, racism, bigotry, homophobia, you know, the list goes on and on and on. They tend to be attracted to the underdogs. So I have another video, um, INFPs are underdog magnets, which I'll link in the description below. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet to Psycasserole, please do so. If you check that link, you'll see that INFPs tend to be attracted to types that are ostracized by the majority of society. And so we're talking about like subcultures, we're talking about lifestyle preferences, we're talking about anything that is out of the norm. So INFPs tend to relate to this. I'm not saying every INFP does, but a lot of them do. You know, they kind of feel like this growing up themselves, like no matter what their socioeconomical background or what, whatever their race is, it doesn't really matter in terms of like their personality. So their personality is going to have some effect. These other issues come on top of all that, you know, but we're talking about personality. And so with these personalities, especially I think for INFP men, it's more difficult because INFP men have to express themselves in a more masculine way when in reality their internal world may be more neutral or it may be traditionally feminine, but it's not going to be accepted by the wide majority of kids out there and teenagers out there. So as we're growing up, we tend to get ostracized. And so we really relate to people. So if you go out of your way and are mean to somebody, INFPs are going to take a stand. I mean, it doesn't matter how nice we are. I mean, I'm a pretty chill person in real life, but you know, if I were to see that, I would get very angry and very vocal. And most people would be like, where in the hell did that come from? Another way to offend an INFP is to tell them that they're not smart. INFPs statistically are on the smarter end of the spectrum. So if we look at IQ scores and we look at the distributions, INFPs on average tend to be, I think it's like the third highest uh, MBTI type um, in relation to intelligence. You know, So intelligence, I always take this with a grain of salt because I believe that there's many types of intelligence out there. And I think that, you know, the IQ test is measuring one specific form of intelligence, but we talk about all these other types of intelligence. IQ does not necessarily measure creativity, doesn't necessarily measure humanistic relations. It doesn't necessarily me measure how we build a framework for how we can per perceive our lives. Like, I think some people are kind of like in the moment and I think INFPs sort of perceive the big picture and we perceive our whole lives kind of at one time. And so it's almost like a like a top-down approach to things. And I see, I don't even know where I was going this, with this. Tell them that their music or their art is not very, very good. I think INFPs who are older have a lot better time with this. When we're younger, INFPs tend to struggle with this. You know, This is from my personal experience, but this is also experiences that I've read online. When they come into their full selves and they feel actualized in their artistic expression, it can come across very strange when somebody says, oh, that's not very good. Even if it's like not objectively good, like even if it's a song that's out of key, or maybe it's a painting that has mixed colors by accident and there's some brown in there or something like that. An INFP is still going to feel offended because they feel like they put a part of themselves onto that artwork. I think like some types, maybe ISFPs, tend to not really connect with their artwork in terms of like, this artwork is an extension of myself. It's more like the artwork is a creation of mine. Whereas INFPs, it's almost like the artwork is an extension of our inner selves. And so when somebody says something about it, it can, it can hurt. But we get used to that. And so as we get older, it just becomes easier and easier. And anybody with FI in their inferior spot is probably going to have an easier time rolling with the punches and taking criticism, whereas an INFP is going to almost have to pretend like they're good at taking criticism. An example I can think of this is like job interviews. So they're asked questions like, you know, are you an uh, energetic person? Are you a detail-oriented person? Are you a team player? And a lot of INFPs, I think, have to pretend like they are. And when they adapt to this extroverted world, it's almost like they're not feeling like them true selves. And so that causes cognitive dissonance within their minds of like, okay, I'm not being true to myself, but I want to be true to myself. How can I be true to myself? Will I ever be true to myself? If you really want to offend an INFP, I would say, 
What you need to do is trick that INFP into going to a really loud, noisy party and then ditch them. An INFP who's at a loud party or a loud social gathering, and, and if they feel stuck in that social gathering, they're going to have a very, very hard time. And I think INFPs would probably agree with this. Like I think a lot of us would probably go outside or hide in the bathroom or our element is not parties okay some people thrive off of this some people love parties like my dad is like this he's an ESTP my dad is like he will go to a party and when he leaves he's like at double the energy he was when he got there maybe triple and it's like the energy just kind of stays with them whereas me it's like you know I just I just shut down so if you're at a party and you really feel like it's bringing you down leave set that boundary we just have to make room for ourselves in this world. I think INFPs can sometimes feel selfish because like online INFPs are like, oh, INFPs are always thinking about themselves. I think a lot of INFPs, if they're selfish, like sometimes they just don't realize it. It's almost like we get caught up in our minds. And when somebody points it out, I think a lot of us are willing to like correct it. We're not, I mean, we are stubborn, but I think when it comes to like self growth and becoming better people, if we're in a healthy state, I think we're gonna accept it. Again, please subscribe if you haven't. My name is Brennan and this is Psych Casserole. Peace out, MBTIs.